Great. Well, welcome everybody to our third session in Kabbalah meditation. It's really uh, been an honor to do these few sessions. I want to restate once again um, that especially because you have the recordings available to you, uh, my pacing is going to be a, a little faster than I would normally do it. Uh, I used to do this in six or eight sessions, just what we're doing here, taking more time with the meditations. Um, but I think with the, the power of Zoom and the, and the recording, uh, trying it at three, it, it, it's a little bit of a, a little tight. Um, so don't it, just please ignore my pace. It, I'm going through a lot of material, and I want to make sure that the meditations, um, each meditation is accessible to you, and that you can repeat it and do all or or some of them. Uh, so please go go online to the Aquarian Minions website and do uh, uh, check out those recordings. Uh, if I'm going too fast uh, on one of them, but again. Um, when you do this on your own, uh, you'll find your own pace. You'll go faster. You'll go slower. You'll go uh, at whatever pace uh, that's accessible to you. The thing is that this is kind of an open-eyed meditation. It's not so much a closed-eyed meditation. It's not like a, it's not like even Vipassana meditation. What it is 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 an, a, a, an awakened awareness meditation of the energy centers in your body, uh, the chakras, or as we say, the spheroid in, in your body. And so uh, we'll be reviewing those now. Uh, I'm going to go on share screen right now, and uh, we will uh, start at the very beginning. So uh, we'll start, of course, with the, uh, the prayer that Reb Zalman uh, gave to us, translated from us from a student, uh, Isaac Loria, in, in the 16th century. So everybody's on mute, so if you would please read this with me, okay? My Lord, creator of all, master of all worlds, supreme, compassionate, and forgiving, Thank you for your Torah. Thank you for allowing me to learn from it and to move to serving you. Thank you for revealing some of the mysteries of your way. I'm amazed this is truly happening to me. I pray too that this study will bring you joy. It is the incense I offer in your holy temple. Bathe this my soul, your soul, in the light of the source of all. Let your radiance be recognized today, now, in me, and through me, that I may use the insights and energy of these, your holy teachings, for the good of all living creatures, everywhere, and for the furtherance of your plan of the coming, continuing creation. Let no one anywhere be hurt by this study. Guard my soul that stays on the straight path back to your home. King David, the joyful singer of Israel, I pray, open my eyes and let me see the wonders of your Torah. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, find favor before you. yud heh Adonai, my rock and my redeemer. So the first gate, the first Sha'ar that we enter through is the gate of the angels. And... Um, and many of us uh, know this prayer. So first we'll do it as a, uh, as a prayer song, Melody by Shlomo Karlbach. And then we'll do the meditation from uh, David Wolfblank and Ripsal. In the name of Adonai, God of all the world, at my right hand is Michael, my left hand Gabriel. Before me is Uriel, behind me Raphael, and above my head, above my head, holy Shekhinah. So the first meditation here. So take a deep breath and just clearing breath and relax. And now we're going to go from in front of us, we're going to envision Oriel. And we're going to go clockwise to the right, we'll, right side, we'll envision Michael. 
behind us we'll envision Raphael and to our left side we'll envision Gabriel. And of course, Oriel is the light and it also represents the time of the future. It's, it's a temporal sense of Oriel is what we're always moving towards. We're always moving towards our future into that white light, Oriel. And to our right side is Michael, this, this sense of kindness or chesed. And this represents a spatial relationship. Uh, behind us is, is healing, is Raphael. As we move into the future, we always leave a little bit of um, a little a little bit of debris in the past, mistakes, impolitenesses, inadvertent mistakes. And so Raphael is always behind us, helping bring healing. And Gabriel is uh, is power, is strength, is discernment. And Gabriel is the archangel, and, and she's on our left side. So we have the sense of left and right are space, a spatial relationship between Michael on our right and Gabriel on our left. And the temporal sense, the time sense of Uriel and Raphael being in front of us and behind us. So this is the, the angels in the time-space continuum. And Shekhinah, the presence of God, is the here and now. Here and now. So now envision, um, we're going to go around the body. Take a breath. Envision Uriel in, fr Uriel in front of you. Michael to your right. Raphael behind you. Gabriel to your left. Oriel, the angel of light in front of you. Michael, the angel of kindness to your right side. Raphael, the angel of healing in back of you. And Gabriel, the angel of power and discernment and strength on your left. Now I'm just going to say their names. Right? So I'm not going to describe them. But just feel them orbiting around your body. Right from your solar plexus all around. There we go. Oriel, Michael, Raphael, Gabriel. Oriel, Michael, Raphael, Gabriel. A little bit faster, okay? Oriel, Michael, Raphael, Gabriel. Oriel, Michael, Raphael, Gabriel. Light in front of us, kindness to our right side, healing behind us, power on our left side. Just the names of the angels now. Oriel, Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, Oriel, Michael, Raphael, Gabriel. They're orbiting around us all the time. They're in front of us, on our right side. Raphael is behind us, gives us a sense of protection. And what binds it all together is Shekhinah. Shekhinah is the here and now. She brings it all together. In the name of Adonai, God of all the world, my right hand is Michael, my left hand Gabriel. For me is Uriel, behind me Raphael. Yalushi above my head, holy show. Mothering presence of God, holy So that's the first gate or the first practice that I like to do uh, when I do this meditation, just because I want a sense of um, coziness or protection. I want to get cozy with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, with the Holy One, and in order to do that, I have to feel these angels around me, and I have to feel like I'm in a safe space. So now let's go to the, um, uh, the next gate, the next sha'ar, which is just a sense of uh, an awakening, an awareness. You know, uh, we know that um, from biofeedback experiments that uh, all I have to do is envision my hands getting warmer, and my hands actually do get warmer, right? If I have cold feet, I just have to envision warmth going down to my feet. So biofeedback is it's not mind over matter. The mind is in matter. The spirit is in matter. Uh, it's just an awakened awareness. And that's what these meditations do, is they give us a, a, a sense of an awakening of these, uh, of, these energies, uh, of these energies within us. So the first awareness, as we learned two weeks ago, is the sense of how our bodies are broken up into these three segments. The head segment, the torso segment, and the hip segment. 
Each segment is a triad of three energy centers. The head segment is Keter on the top of her head, a Chachma on the right side of her head, and Bina on the left side of the head. So now just envision the energy going from the top of your head to the right side of your head to the left side of your head. And you don't have to do a big envisioning, right? Just by saying it, top of the head, right side of the head, left side of the head, just by saying it, you're actually sending energy, you're sending your awareness to that part of the body. So that's the head triad. Keter, Chachma, Bina. Feel the energy as you say it. Keter, Chachma, Bina. You don't know, you have to know the Hebrew. Top of the head, right side of the head, left side of the head. Beautiful. And now you've activated the head triad. Now let's activate the torso triad. Um, so this goes from the right shoulder, so to speak, the right side of the body, from Chesed to Gevorah on the left side of the body, to the left shoulder, to the heart of the center of the chest, to Tiferet. Chesed, Gevorah, Tiferet. Feel that energy flow. Right, right side of the body, left side of the body, the center of the body, of the torso. Right side of the torso, left side of the torso, center of the torso. Chesed to Gevorah to Tiferet. Once again, it's not, don't make a big deal out of visualizing it and seeing all the colors or hearing all the sounds. That comes with practice. We go down to the third triad, which is the triad of the hips. So from the right hip, which is Netzach, energy flows now to the left, to the left uh, hip, which is Hod, down to the lower abdomen, genital area, called Yesod. Netzach, Hod, Yesod. Right hip, left hip, lower abdomen. Right hip, left hip, lower abdomen. And now the energy flow right down to the feet to Machut. So this is it. This is uh, the activation of these three segments of the body. We're aware of it. And of course, we're not looking to segment ourselves. We're looking for some kind of unity. But the segmentation comes with awareness that there are different parts of the body, that the top of the, the head is the intake. And so much of our... Um, so much of our energy comes from our nose, from our ears, from our mouth, and when we eat, and when we speak, and our eyes, we're intaking data. And that the torso is processing of data. The lungs, the, all the organs of the body, the, the, the liver, the, the heart, are all processing the data that comes into you from the head. And of course, the hip triad is the extrusion, uh, the tuchus, the genitalia, the urinary system. Everything is going out. Exchange is made. Uh, at, at this, from the inside of the body to the outside of the body. And of course, we're grounded with our feet on the ground. So by being aware of it, even just looking at the chart, you're actually a activating those um, energy uh, centers in the triads. Now, of course, what we're looking to do is the next gate, the third meditation, is just simply following the flow. So I'm going to name, I'm going to go down the flow. First, I'm going to do it in the English. Um, the part of the body, uh, and I'm going to follow the arrow. I think you can see my cursor. I'm going to just follow the flow down the body, just like following the arrows, right? And then I'll name them in, in just the Hebrew, okay? So feel the energy at the top of your head, flowing to the right side of your head, flowing to the left side of your head, crossing your neck to your right shoulder, crossing across your torso to your left shoulder, going down right to the center of your chest to your heart, from your heart to your right hip, from your right hip to your left hip, from your left hip to your lower abdomen, lower abdomen down to your feet. And now we'll, we'll start again from the top, and now I'll name the sphero. Keter, to Chachma, to Bina, to Chesed, to Gevorah, to Teferet, to Netzach, Hod, Yesod, Mahut. Once again, it doesn't matter how fast or slow you go. I do this in my daily davening every day, so I do it rather quickly. I just kind of go, I don't even say the names anymore, right? I just, but I do look at the chart. I open my eyes and I just go, so to speak, if I was, because I'm not saying it out loud, so I just kind of flow down with the sense of an awareness that the energy is flowing down my body. And of course, it also flows up. We haven't done that. We haven't done much work with the flowing of the energy up from the earth uh, through your body. Uh, that's a, a, another level of the practice. But if you could just get the idea that energy is flowing down from God, from Keter, all the way to Malchut, uh, then it's a beautiful meditation because you're you're awakening these um, you're awakening these chakras, these energy centers, these 
spheroid inside of you. And once you know the meaning of them, it just becomes more enhanced. Once you know the colors of them, it becomes more enhanced. Once you know the tones, which we're going to do in a little while, it becomes more enhanced. But the first element of just being aware of top of the head, right side of the head, left side of the head, right shoulder, etc. Gavorah, Teferit, Netzachot, just that awareness of energy flowing down, just in this way, always from the right side down, right? Always from the right side down, uh, gives you this uh, beautiful sense. I don't know if it, it's ease or peace, but um, connectivity, connection. Now, of course, I just wanted to show you this because it doesn't really go in straight lines, right? You know, look at that. That's kind of a rigid straight line, you know, really coming out of a patriarchal age. And it's nice that we have a nice chart like that. It's kind of Aristotelian. It's logical. But really, the energy flows more in a circular manner. <coughs> and it's probably much faster than we can even imagine. I'm sure somebody who knows biofeedback can really give us that really this flowing down is probably happening 60 times per second or something like that at, at an electronic rate, a neurological rate that's very fast. If somebody knows the actual rate that the energy flows in the body, uh, please put it in the chat. I'd love, love to learn this myself. Um, but the energy probably flows down more in a circular manner, just like that. It twists inside the heart, goes into the hip, goes into the lower abdomen, and down into the feet. Uh, my friend Sandy Pond is a fantastic artist. She may be here with us today. I'm not sure if she's here, but she gave me permission to share uh, something. Um, don't get stuck in the look of the chart, right? This, again, there are not little circles on your body, right? The chakras in Hindu system can be a little bit distracting because they're not little circles, and they're not little circles in the Kabbalah either. Really, your whole body is filled with these, these energy centers. So a number of years ago, about three years ago, I asked Sandy if she could create one where the colors permeated the entire system, the entire physiological system of the body. So from Keter, uh, we're not going to, it's, it's beyond the visual spectrum, but it's beautiful white beyond all white to the golden side of Chachma. And it's not a visual gold, it's a gold, it's unimaginable gold to the mirror-like substance of the silver, which is Bina, uh, to the purple coming down into the body, to the blue coming into the Gevora, into the heart, to the green, uh, into Netzach. Um, isn't that beautiful? This is Sandy Pond's uh, illustration, uh, all the way to, 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 to Hod, to Yesod, which is red, permeating down into the feet. Uh, I, I love it because it really shows the energy filling the whole body rather than just being little circles, right? So it's pretty, pretty cool. So don't get stuck on the maps. Remember, these are only maps. These are only maps, right? They're not the streets themselves. They're not the roads and the highways. They're just maps of the road. Uh, she did another one, uh, which I really love. It's just fantastic. She's taken the sphere out and put it into the body into kind of doing kind of a, uh, a yoga, a Kabbalistic yoga based upon the color spectrum. Remember, these colors are from Reb Zalman's spectrum. But I love the way she, uh, Sandy Pond uh, uh, created these, the energy flowing through the body, the entire body, uh, into our exercising, just into our lives. Okay, so we learned this last week. There are basically two flows that we're going to be going through today. Uh, there's the, 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 heart, the, uh, the, the vertical flow of energy going down and then up, and the horizontal flow, which we start with. So, everybody take a nice clearing breath, relax. We're just going to go from the head to the shoulders to the hips. Three horizontal flows. First one at the head. Imagine the energy flowing, the divine chayut, the divine life force of God, flowing from the right side of your head to the left side of your head, and then back, left side of your head to your right side of your head. Envision the energy flowing from Chachma, right side of your head, to Bina, left side of your head, and then back, left side of your head, right side of your head. Now again, this may go faster than I'm speaking, it may go slower. Really, it's going at its own rate anyway. The energy between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of the brain are constantly exchanging data, right, through the corpus callosum. But when you do it as a meditation, you can slow it down, you can go Chachma, to Bina, Bina, to Chachma. Or if you prefer, 
Chachma Bina, Bina, Chachma, Chachma Bina. Or if you prefer, right side of the head, left side of the head. Or if you prefer to touch your head, just to touch the right side, left side, left side, right side. Just by touching, just by naming it, just by calling it out loud, just by looking at the chart, you are activating at some level of activation, energy flowing between the right side of your head and the left side of your head, and then back. Take a breath. Now we go to the shoulders. We go to the right shoulder to the left shoulder, left shoulder to the right shoulder. Chesed to Gevura, Gevura to Chesed, Chesed, Gevura, Gevura, Chesed. You can do it slower, Chesed, Gevura, Gevura, Chesed. You can do it in English. Right shoulder, left shoulder, left shoulder, right shoulder. You can do it more quickly. Whatever, what, you know, as my friend uh, Rachel Rich says, your body's weight. Chesed, Gevura, Gevura, Chesed, Chesed, Gevura, Gevura, Chesed. You can do it out loud. You can do it silently. Activate those energy centers in the right shoulder and the left shoulder. Beautiful. Take a clearing breath. Let's move down to the hips. Third triad, the hip triad. But we're going to just activate Netzach, the right hip, to the left hip, left hip, to the right hip. In Hebrew, Netzach to Hod, Hod to Netzach, Netzach Hod, Hod Netzach, right hip, left hip, left hip, right hip. Slowly, quickly, as Rich Rush would say, your body's way. Right hip, left hip, left hip, right hip. Clearing breath. Now try to feel all three activated at the same time. It kind of goes beyond names at this point, and this might be good if you want to look at the chart. Just by looking at all three of these horizontal arrows, head, chest, hip, just look at them and envision the energy flowing in all three triads simultaneously. Head, torso, hip. Head, torso, hip. Just feel the horizontal flow in all three of your triads, all three of your segments, simultaneously. There we go. If it's not clear, you just practice it. In other words, it should be clear in your mind's eye, in your imagination, feeling the flow simultaneously in your head, back and forth, shoulders, back and forth, hips back and forth simultaneously. It gets easier every day as you do this. If you do it as part of your daily meditation or as part of your davening and incorporate it in, I'm telling you in a couple of weeks, you'll get this down. You're gonna feel all three flows simultaneously. Some of you do right now, some of you may not. If you don't practice it. Okay, let's go to the horizontals now. Excuse me, the verticals. So um, I like to start in the center. Um, I just find it easy to go from the center to the right to the left. However you want to do it, because ultimately you're going to do these simultaneously too. Ultimately, you're also going to do the three horizontals and the three verticals simultaneously. So you get this kind of like a Christmas tree of effect of your body or an evergreen tree in your body. So let's just start with the, the, uh, the verticals now starting with the top of your head to your heart to your lower abdomen to your feet feel the energy coming down and now coming up feet lower abdomen heart top of the head i'll just name them in hebrew keter deferred yesod malchut malchut yesod deferred keter top to bottom top of the head heart lower abdomen, and feet, feet, lower abdomen, heart, and keter. And I apologize last week, but the word yesod is spelled wrong. I've got to get that corrected before I send it out to you. Okay, just feel them going, feel the center line energy going down and up. Quickly, work slowly. 
That doesn't matter. You're activating the energy of vertical energy flow down the center of your body. And now let's go to the right column. Classical Kabbalah, they call these the parts of the body columns. From the center column to the right column. Envision the energy from the right side of your head, Chachma, to the right shoulder, Chesed, going down to the right hip, Netzach. From the right hip, then go up to the right shoulder, to the right side of the head. Just three. The energy flowing down. We'll connect it to Malkut in a little while. But right now, just these three. The head, the torso, and the hips on the right side. Right side of the head, right shoulder, right hip. Right hip, right shoulder, right side of the head. Chachma, chesed, netzach. Netzach, chesed, chachma. Feel that flow of energy going down and up. Beautiful. Now let's go to the left column, the left side. Once again, you'll forgive whether I'm going too slowly or too quickly. You'll adjust this at your own rate. Right now, this is a learning session. This is a lab. Left column, left side of the head, Bina. Left shoulder, Gavura. Left hip, Hod. Now feel the energy going up from Hod to Gavura to Bina. Right, left side of the head, left shoulder, left hip. Left hip, left shoulder, left side of the head. Energy flowing down and up. And now, and once again, I'll recommend you do it open eyed so you can look at the chart. Uh, and in my next permutation of the chart, I want to get the arrows going up as well. So what we want to do is feel all three uh, verticals going simultaneously. Take a look at the chart and feel it going from the Keter and Chachma and Bina feel the energy flowing down, all three, and then all three flowing up. All three flowing down. It's beyond the words now. You would get too stuck if you tried to name them all, but you can feel the energy flowing down your body and up your body. Down your body and up your body. All three flows simultaneously. I'll be quiet for a moment. Try to feel all three flows simultaneously. Beautiful. All right. Let's take a look now. This is what we're doing, right? We talked about this week one. You are ultimately building your scaffolding. Your energy scaffolds, you're not building it. You're becoming aware of the existence of an energetic scaffolding that's in a sense holding up your whole body. You know, you could say your body holds up the energy. The energy holds up your body. I'm sure it's both. It's simultaneous. And the way you get to it is through these uh, practices of being aware of the, uh, the flow of energy going into your uh, segments of your body uh, horizontally uh, and, and then vertically, uh, becoming aware of the comp beautiful complexity of this uh, system of, of energy that, that, that flows within us. So before we get to toning and the Reb Zellman's prayer, I want to pause for a moment just to see if there are any specific questions uh, on the topic that we're dealing with here, the horizontal, the vertical, and the energy flows of the scaffolding. If anybody has any questions, please uh, please just uh, mute yourself for a moment and, uh, and ask the question. Um, Rabbi Zaslo, uh, ultimately, when you practice these flows, should you... Uh, you, you have heard you say it's beyond words, but should you try it? Ultimately, do you want to be thinking the Hebrew names? Do you want to just feel the presence in your body? What's the, where, where are we looking to the direction to where we want to be with this? Uh, of course, it's an integrated whole. It's sort of like, a, I don't know if you're a musician or not, but uh, when I learned how to read music at first, I was going D, E, G, B, B flat, F sharp, right? You're totally aware of the names of the notes. But when you practice reading music, after a while, you're, you're no longer going D to F to F sharp, right? But it's in there, right? Because it's, it's part of learning how to read music. So uh, ultimately, when you learn the spherot and the names of them, they're just going to be behind the scenes. Just like when you're reading music, uh, the notes are behind the scenes. You're not naming the notes. You're reading them fluently. And that's the whole idea here is you want to be a fluent meditator. You want to have a fluid experience of your meditation. 
You don't want to be stuck in the charts and the verticals and the horizontals. That's only part of the calisthenics in the practice. It's like dance, you learn the steps and then it flows, right? It's like a martial art. You learn the different, the kata, you learn the different parts and then it flows. It's like music, right? You learn the parts and then it flows. Great question. Uh, Leela, Leela is asking, how do we get the images we didn't get yet? Uh, that's going to be sent out to everybody who's registered to the class. Uh, Lorelai will be sending it out. So uh, everything that we've done, all these charts, will be sent to you on a PDF. Uh, one more question. Anybody have one? Please do. Please, Rosalind. Roz, um, yeah, for the horizontals, I was, I've had this desire to move, like with the um, sort of an infinity, the eight. For the horizontals, it seems to work. Does beautiful? What about adding movement? Or <laughs> absolutely. Listen, anybody that tells you there were rigid lockdown rules to this thing, I don't know. I don't buy that. I just think it's more fluid than we can imagine. Uh, this came out of a patriarchal era. I think it's brilliant. But as we come into a, 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 a feminine era, uh, then there's more colors and there's more movements put on some good jazz, put on some good music in the background and, and, and do this as a meditational dance, right? Uh, don't get stuck in the chart, right? It's functional. It's a functional reality, uh, not just a, a, a rigid chart with little circles on your body. I think that's the first phase of it. But thank you for asking that question, Roz. I think, it, I think movement is great. Uh, look, when you go to a shul, right? The old shuls, right? The guys were davening, right? They were, they were flowing the energy from the top of the body down, shuffling left and right. They had the choreography, they had the movement. So please move, experiment with it, right? None of us know what's happening in this next phase of evolutionary development in terms of Kabbalistic meditation and the, the recognition of the divine feminine permeating all of this is, is in this generation, your generation and your children's generation and grandchildren are gonna completely transform Kabbalistic practice and meditation. All right, we'll go back to the, uh, go back to the uh, patriarchal charts right now. Uh, and we'll do the um, magnificent uh, prayer that Rav Zalman has given us to activate uh, the energy centers. This, as I said last week, uh, is the Amida. All 19 benedictions of the Amida are embedded in this. Uh, if you know the Amida, the first one is the Avot, the second one is Gevurot, the third one is Kedusha, is holiness. They're all in these words, all 19 benedictions. I'm not breaking down the Amida for you here. If you know it, that's great. If you don't know it, it works just by itself, right? So let's do Reb Zalman's prayer, praying from the body. Now, here's the thing. When, I, when Reb Zalman was teaching me this, and he said, when praying from the body, he said, tell the people not to be just doing it from their mouth. It's not just like... Uh, the top part says, I, I affirm the power. Of all golfers like us can unlock 20, 30 yards of extra resistance in just one bucket of 40 practice balls, just by making a 30 second tweak of their feet, hips, or shoulders. If, if, if folks would mute yourself, Jerry, I'd really Jerry. appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Unmuted, Jerry. Please, please mute yourself. Thank you. So, uh, ILI, you're there. I'm going to have you read the top three, and then you'll alternate with me like we did last week, okay? Because I want you to hear different voices. So you're activating the energy centers. We're going to go from uh, the, 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 the above the body to the top of the head, right side of the head, left side of the head. We're going to follow the flow, right shoulder, left shoulder, heart, right hip, left hip, lower abdomen, uh, down to, to Malkut. So Reb Zalman said, tell, please tell the people not to just be doing it from their mouth, but to envision that that part of the body is actually speaking, right? You got to use a little, the imaginal realm, uh, as Eve Ilson calls it. Uh, the top of the head is speaking, the right side of the head is speaking. Of course, it's coming out of your mouth, but try to envision the part of your body speaking. The heart speaks, the right hip speaks. So I allow uh, and I will alternate. She'll do the top three, then I'll do Keter, she'll do Chachma, etc. So please, everybody, mute yourself except I allow, and please read the words out loud with me. Okay? Please mute yourself, everybody. I hear some more voices there, and I can't get to everybody. Okay, Ayla, here we go. Take a breath, everybody. I place myself under the protection of the Sphira of Keter, which will shield me from all harm. No, you, you're going to read, I'm sorry. Can you see above uh, that where it says, I affirm the power of positive sure. affirmations? Thank you. You read those three. I affirm the power of positive affirmations. 
I affirm that the Shekhinah surrounds me and blesses me. I affirm the light beings of God's service who support and guide me. I affirm the blessings of Abraham and Sarah in my life. I affirm the sacrifice of Isaac and God's power over my life and death. I affirm God's holiness and my growth toward it. I place myself under the protection of the sphere of Keter, which will shield me from all harm and neutralize it. I invoke the flow of Chochmah to align my intellect with clarity and purpose to inspiration and realization. I invoke the care of Bina to lead me to God's heart. I invoke the abundance of Chesed to bring me to atonement. I invoke the power of Gevura to see me through trouble and lead me to redemption. I place myself in the compassionate heart of God's Tiferet and affirm the healing, balancing, integrative, centering light within me. I support myself on the pillar of Netzach, channeling to it all manner of blessing and prosperity, and place it at the disposal of the redeeming Mashiach, unfolding to witness the Shekhinahs residing in Sion, in Zion. I support myself on the pillar of Hod, making order in my life, gathering all the faces from dispersion, and setting them in the blessed Jerusalem, where I offer my thanks to God's glory. I support myself on the pillar and base myself on the foundation of Yesod to act righteously and justly, to assist every righteous effort in the world and to become peaceful, to work for peace. I affirm that Malchut, the Shekhinah, is the one offering these affirmations in me and is attaching the flow of blessings to, f to suffuse my life. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Thank you, Ayla. Um, do this every day for uh, a couple of weeks. You, you'll never kind of want to go a day without it. It's just, it's a, it's a beautiful prayer. Uh, it's rooted. It, it's, it's in the Masara. It's rooted in the, the 19 blessings of the uh, Amidah. You can do it in place of a weekday Amidah. It works just fantastically. But again, it's not coming out of your mouth. It's coming trying to envision the prayer, like just go to Chesed, which is atonement, right? You try trying to envision the words or the energy of going activated, coming to that sphera or going out from the sphera. So as you envision the energy coming out from the sphera of Chesed, you go, I invoke the abundance of Chesed to bring me to atonement, the right shoulder, right? And then to Gevura, same thing. You want to envision the energy coming out of your body as if the part of the body is doing the prayers. A couple of sprawling errors in here, so please forgive me, but you'll, you'll, uh, you'll, I'll get those corrected. So uh, we're not going to do the Hebrew here, but this is what it looks like. Everybody will have this chart. Um, if you're a Hebrew reader, if you're a dominer with the Amidah, here's the way it works first folks, it's just gorgeous to actually do the chatima for each sphera from that part of your body. The only thing I want to warn you about the chart is that it's not really going at an angle from left to right on the top. It really should be going top down. Uh, but when Steve Chazan, Steve Clapper was making it, we just didn't have enough room. So we got to figure out how to do, do smaller type, but we really want it to come from the top of the head, above the head, uh, down. Uh, for those of you who know the Hebrew, again, I'm not doing this with you today. Follow the numbers. It's an amazing system that Isaac Gloria Alavashon created to actually follow the flow of the numbers and to see how activated. Take a look at, for example, Netzach has three prayers associated with this from the Amidah. Hod has three prayers associated with it, and Yesod. All the energy of the prayers, nine out of the 19 prayers are happening in your... Um, in your lower abdomen, uh, in your in the triad of the, of the hips, all the energy is happening right from here. In our culture, we live in our heads, right? Some cultures live in their in the shoulders, but ancient uh, ancient Kabbalists believe the energy really comes from this uh, this center, this triad. So again, we're not going over these here, but I just wanted to share these with you. 
Uh, let's go to um, let's go to some let's do some toning. Uh, again, I'm just being aware of the clock, so uh, forgive me for going so quickly. Uh, but I want I want you to get these practices. So now, separate from the words, each sphera, according to the Kabbalist Sisvat in the 16th century, uh, as redacted and put together by the Arizal and his the students in Cordovero, each center of the body, each sphera has a tone. And the top of the, the head is ha. Uh, really, the vowel is all, but the he is a container for the vowel itself. So top of the head is ha, right side of the head is ha, left side of the head is he. So I'm going to say them. You can say them with me. I'm going to just do the top triad. In one, in one breath, I'll do all three. Ha, ha, he. Or you may prefer a slower meditation at home to do one breath per sphere up. And we'll go like this. Ha, ha. Rachel Rush would say, your body's way, right? One breath per spira, or just do, do them in triads, okay? Now let's go to the, the right shoulder. The, the segol, the, the vowel is eh, we say he. Eh. One breath, one word. I, I'm short breath because I'm speaking so much. You could do it a little longer if you wish. He. Good. Gavura, left shoulder. This is a staccato. It's not birth breathing. So it's not he, 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 breathing in. You want, you probably can get about six he sounds, seven he sounds in one breath. Something like this. Everyone try that. Beautiful. Gavura gets a staccato. And then the heart. The fur gets the hole. Ho. Nice. So again, you're in meditation, you can do one breath per sphere, or you could do all three in the triad. So the, I'm gonna do it now is he, he, ho in one breath. He, 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 ho. See how it works? Do it in triads, or do one breath per sphere. Now to the right hip, the sound is e, he. Left hip is u, who. Lower abdomen is who. Sounds the same, but it's slightly different. This is a soft u, who. This is a little bit of a firmer who, who. It's got more of an h sound around it, more of a hey sound. So it goes like this to do all three. He. Very subtle difference. He, who, who. One breath per sphere. Up. He. Soft. Who. Firmer. Who. Feet, just get a no vowel, just a H sound, just a hey sound, right? Isn't this great? I don't know about you, but I just love this. Now you could do right down the whole body in one breath, right? This takes a little practice. Let me just show you how it goes. One breath. Try with me. Again, this is just a demo today, but you can get the idea of how practicing is slowly, one breath per, one breath per triad, 
or one breath for all three, activates through toning the different serot in the body. And then you can get totally psychedelic with the thing and add the colors in. So as you're doing he for the shoulders, you're envisioning violet, purple in the visual, visual spectrum. The reason these three is, is the Kabbalists teach us that this is beyond the visible spectrum. It comes into the spectrum in the right shoulder at Chesed, and then it goes into the spectrum of blue. So can you imagine doing he envisioning violet, he envisioning blue, ho envisioning green, etc. He representing uh, uh, yellow, envisioning the colors, envisioning the tones, knowing which sphera it is. It's uh, it's pretty psychedelic. It's pretty cool. It's three dimensional. It activates the centers in your body. Practice it. It's pretty simple. Practice it with the Amida. So, uh, is there, can, can I mention one possibility with this? Please, Gloria. After having done the sounds, the natural place with the silent exhale ending is to allow your consciousness to be up to Keter in the held out breath. Very nice, Gloria. Beautiful, beautiful practice. And certainly, you know, um, as Rob Zalman Alavashalm used to say, that when you're doing the davening and you're doing the meditation and you're speaking to God, so to speak, through all of this, and you get down to this lower hay here and you go, <sighs> is don't just go on, but pause and be silent. He used to, his expression was, don't hang up the phone. You know, don't hang up the phone. When you've just spoken to God, now listen for the response. Feel also the called the space in between. It's the Aleph is the breath of air that decides between Sefer Yitzira. Beautiful. Thank you, Jerry. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So Aleph is the space between. It's the white space. Leave time to really receive, not just put it out. Right? We've been focusing on in this class on how to put it out there, not so much how to receive. But that again comes with practice and finding it to finding doing it your body's way. So let's go to uh, the breath meditation um, here. Um, so we're going to start at the upper hay of God's, uh, the yud of God's name, the upper hay, the vav, and the uh, the lower hay. So it, it, it's recommended that we try to envision where we, we are created, but Salam Elohim, but Salam Adonai, but Salam Yud Hey that God's name is imprinted probably in every cell in our body, certainly in every organ of our body, and certainly in the entirety of our body. So a beautiful meditation is just visual, envisioning the imprint of the Yudhei Vafei on our body. If we just did this visually and in silence, that's gorgeous. We see our body as a living embodiment of the Yudhei Vafei, of the four-letter name of God. But this meditation is a breath meditation. This is just one way to do it. Uh, it, it, that Rav Zalman recommends, and it goes like this. Uh, the upper he, the upper yud, excuse me, is the breath all the way out. The inhale is the is the H sound, the he. The breath all the way in, just for a moment, is the vav, and the exhale is the he. So it goes something like this. The breath all the way out. Everybody, let your breath out. You can't really do it with me because I'm just chattering too fast here. But just you'll get the, you'll get the idea. The breath all the way out, that's yud. Breathe in, upper hay. Hold the breath at the top for just a second. You want to, when I say hold it, I don't mean like that, right? But just in a natural way, it pauses. That's the, that's the vav, and the exhale is the hay. So the inhale and the exhale, the active parts are in the haze, right? Yud, breath all the way out. Hay, breathe in. Vav, the top of the breath. Exhale, breathe out. Try it with me. Again, again, the pacing is completely wrong. You'll have to find your own way to do it. Breath all the way out, yud. Breathe in, hey. Hold the top of the breath, vav. Exhale, hey. I'm just going to say the name of the, uh, the, the letter of God's name, and you'll know what to do. Yud, hey, vav, hey. Breath all the way out, inhale, breath all the way in, 
exhale. Yud, He, Vav, He. Breath all the way out. Inhale, breath all the way in. Exhale. One more time. Yud, He, Vav, He. Beautiful. And, and again, just ignore my pacing. You'll find your own pacing to this, but this is a beautiful meditation to envision God not just up imprinted on your body, but imprinted within your breath itself. Practice this one, it's, a, it's beautiful. Some of you I, I know already do it. We won't get into the theories of this stuff, but you know, it really is trying to unify the four worlds, the, the body, the heart, the mind, and the soul, all the aspects of our being are unified and deeply connected together uh, by doing this particular practice. On a biological level, a skeletal system is the lower hay, the blood and water systems, urinary systems, the circulatory systems, the respiratory system is the air system, the nervous system is the fire system. And it corresponds to body, heart, mind, and soul, earth, water, air, and fire. Again, this is just the theoretical part, but it gives you a sense of this beautiful four world imprint in, 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 in our lives. Okay, this is the final one we're learning today, and then we'll open it up for some final questions. Boy, this hour goes really fast. <laughs> Laura, if we do this again, we've got to do it in six sessions or so. Okay, now just this beautiful practice. Take a clearing breath. And just envision from Keter the energy flowing down. You can't do this with words. You can't go from Keter, it's going to Chachma, to Bina, to Chesed, to Gevorah, to Ketfer. It's beyond words. It just happens by itself anyway. You don't have to do this meditation to do the meditation just by being alive. You're practicing Kabbalah, right? You're doing the meditation by just living. But by becoming a little bit aware of it or breaking it down uh, through Bina Talochim, God's understanding that God gives us, it, it really it helps uh, activate this and make it practical. So envision the energy coming from Keter at the top of your head and just flowing down through the whole body. Feel the stream of like a waterfall. Can't do it in your mind's eye, closed eye. Look at the chart. Look at the chart. Print this out, put it on your stender, on your music stand, and just see the energy going from the top, top of your head flowing all the way down, right, left, right, left, center, simultaneously, right, left, center, down. Isn't that beautiful? Feeling it from the top of the head, flowing all the way down. Top of the head, flowing all the way down. Now you can do this with all the spherot. Let's do another one. I haven't, we haven't finished this. Steve Klepper and I haven't finished artistically doing this chart yet. But let's go down to Yesod. Right, lower abdomen, feel the energy going lower abdomen, feeling the energy going down to your feet, and feeling from your sod, it going to your right hip, left hip, and then all the way up. So this is pretty cool because you're feeling it going down from your sod, your lower abdomen, and up to the rest of your body, simultaneously. Can't do it closed eyes, open your eyes. Look at the chart. From your sod, energy flowing upward, flowing downward. Beautiful. Uh, this one should have come next, actually. The heart. Look at this. Look at the ferret. The energy of the ferret flowing up and down from the heart center, from the ferret, feel the energy flowing up and flowing down simultaneously. Just look at the chart, and it'll actually automatically trigger this response in your body. From your heart, flowing up, flowing down. Flowing up, flowing down. Flowing up going down. Beautiful, isn't this? And then uh, from Yisot, excuse me, from Mochut, feel the energy from your feet flowing just like the first one that we did, but feel it flowing upward into all the spherot in the whole body simultaneously. Don't worry about the names of the spherot. Don't worry about the colors of the tones. Don't worry about Yudei Vafei. Don't worry about anything. Just feel the energy flowing from the earth right up through your feet, right up through your entire body. Can't do it closed eyes, open your eyes. Beautiful. So I think I'm going to pause here. Remember that goes, and you really, you could do it from any one of them. You could do it from Gavura to Chesed, but it's good to do the center ones, from the feet down, from the heart, 
from Yisod, just makes it a little bit easier to do that. So let me uh, come off the charts here, and uh, we have a few more minutes. I'll definitely stay a couple of minutes extra. Thank you for letting me go so so rapidly through these. I, I really appreciate that. I, I, I'm sorry I had to go so fast, but I, you'll you'll have the the the, audio, the tape of it. You can go back to your favorite part, and you'll have the chart of it and practice it. And then I'd love Rabbi to David, we thank you. We all thank you so much. Thank you. Really an honor. Any final questions, please? Got a couple more minutes. Yeah, please, Marty. I'm wondering about the relationship of the middle pillars, the sphero to the middle pill pir pillars with the right and left. Am I understanding correctly, for example, if someone feels like they're, they're over chesedic, they can tap into teferit or do they tap into Gevura to become in a more Tiferet balanced middle great, position? Great question. Listen, um, we, in our culture, we've all been raised, the energy flow is really in the, in our, we're really head trippers, right? Uh, some of us, you know, from our generation, from the 60s, are move into our hearts. Uh, but really, many Eastern religions really start with the hips. That's why the lotus position the root chakra is is in a sitting position, so you can energize from 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 the from the hips flowing upward and downward. So what we have to do, Marty, is realize that some of us are going to feel more energy here, some here, some in the in the hips, some of us on the left side, the right side, and you can actually find a little bit more balance. This is not a cure for a medical medical issues, but it's it certainly creates energy to balance. If you feel weakness in your left side or your right side, you could send some good energy from your chesed, the right shoulder, over to your left shoulder. If you're not, if you're very bad at borders, if you're bad at saying no, if you're bad at protecting yourself and you need a little more gavura, shift some of that kind energy you've got and let it become more powerful. Let it become stronger. On the other hand, if you're a gavura dick person, you're always saying no and you're always putting up borders, shift some of those energies over to the right side uh, to, to kindness. You could certainly, it's just sort of like uh, your eyes. You know, I wear glasses and each eye has a different prescription in it, right? So the idea of a good, of a good prescription is to get a little more balance in my eyes. Thank you, Marty. Great question. Any Thank other you. questions? Please, yeah. I won't call on you. Uh, just, just start speaking. Another answer to Marty's good question is, um, there are eight verses in Sefer Yetzirah that speak about the balance between Shin and Mem and Aleph. And it's always Shin is hot, Mem is cold, Aleph is temperate. It's all about balance. Shin is in the head, Mem is in the belly, Aleph is the breath of air that decides between. Um, and I've collected some of that in some of my published writings and I can send it to Lorelei and David. Send it to me, Jerry. I'd really appreciate that. You know, uh, what we want to make sure, Sefi Yetzirah really is the foundation of all this work that, came, that Laurie had developed. Uh, these three segments of the body are not some unique discovery, right? They're kind of pretty universal. So we want to shift that. The idea is to, we want to be more balanced. We want to be more balanced. We can't live in Teferit. For Teferit to be good Teferit, you have to have Chesed and Gevorah, right? We need them all. Thank you. Anybody else have a comment or a question? It's 102. I'm going to stay around for a few more minutes. Anybody needs to leave, please leave. Those of you who could stay, hang around a little bit. Please, with, anybody has a question? I do. Without without <clears throat> needing the attention to the to da'at, um, I'm just thinking of that as the preparation, the kavana, to start the process, that doorway of da'at. Beautiful. Beautiful dot. Gloria is going, she's coming into my next class here, which is to the, the idea of dot, which is a knowingness. It's it's a ghost sphere. It permeates the whole being, the whole body. Anybody else have a question? Anna, did you have one? I just wanted to mention that I notice when I'm doing this that because I'm so Western and so much in my head a lot, that I think forward. And I had to remember my to, to really include my back body and my side bodies so that I get the full rotation of the spiral. Beautiful, thank you. And don't forget, we, it's, 
look, we are Western, right? We, we do think from our heads and it's okay to do that. That's why the chart is good. You just don't want to get stuck in the chart. You want it to become biologically natural. You want that energy flow to be organic. That just takes practice. You know, it's like if you're doing anything with practice, you know, you got to do first, it's mechanical. If you learn how to dance, uh, you learn your steps. It's very mechanical. It's very awkward until you get to the fluidity of it. Anybody else? How are the angels that you incorporated in the first blessing and song, how are they fitting into the Sphi Road and that energy flow? Gorgeous question. And I, honestly, I do not know the answer to that. I've been trying to figure it out myself. Uh, I wish, uh, I, you know, I can consult directly in the physical plane with Rob Zalman, uh, but I can't. Uh, I tried this morning to get the correct colors. Uh, I'm playing with Michael, of course, as, 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 as violet. And Gabriel is blue. I think Ariel is white. I think the healing prayer comes from the heart. I think it's green. I think Shekhinah is the earth, so I put it brown. I'm not positive how they fit into the uh, to the Sfirot. I'm sure somebody much more, uh, much smarter than I am uh, will know how to do that. But right now, I'm just happy to get the angels surrounding me. I wonder if that pattern is just particularly appropriate to go with the Moda'ani. Could be, could be. The angels, to call out the angels. Yeah, you can make it be. I'll show you one thing I'm working with here. Lorelai, is this okay for me to just hang out for a couple of minutes? Yes. I, I have to say something too. What the Aquarian Minion is doing is so gorgeously, unbelievably unique. Uh, it, it, it's mamish gewalt, you know? Uh, Lorelai, you're amazing to have put this together. And I just want to say that if you can afford a donation by the end of the year to the Aquarian Minion, you know, I thank you know, God, this uh, Lorelei and the, this program is supporting those of us who are teachers. You know, I, I'm getting the bulk of, a, a, of, the, of the income coming in from this thing, but I really want the Aquarian Minion to get to get more. So please, if you can afford a special donation to support the, uh, the, uh, the, the yeshiva, please do. If you have grant possibilities or foundation possibilities, let Lorelei know. I think it's very important to fund this. This is singular. I'm telling you, I work with, you know, next week I'm leaving a service for the Boulder community. And uh, this is one of a kind yeshiva. This is an amazing thing going on here, right, right, out, right out of uh, the Aquarian Minion. Uh, I just want to show you one thing here. Um, I didn't share this because it's just too much to share. Uh, but take a look at this chart. I, this was just an accidental discovery. I think the Shema falls into line with the Sfirot. Shema is Chesed, Yisrael is Gevora, Yudevafe is Teferet, Eloheinu is Netzach, Hod is the Splendor, Yudevafe, Yesod is Echad, Baruch Shem Kavod Malchut Oliolam Va'ed. I think it's possible that the Shema itself, which is a six word prayer, and then the Baruch Shem Kavod is Malchut works with this. So you could say the Shema using this chart with the colors. Isn't this pretty cool? I love that. You know, I'm not sure it's accurate, but I think it is. It just sort of like <laughs> fell into my lap one day, you know. Rabbi David, you started to show a circular color chart at the end and then it went away. Are you willing to put it back? Which color chart? It was the very end, and it went fast, and it was circles, and in the center, it said, you are here, I believe. You see, I'm tempting you here. So first of all, I'll just give you a little bit more until Laurel, I throws me off, okay? The seven days of the <laughs> Yes, I'm days tempted. Of the seven days of creation also follows the color pattern. It follows the water separate, the blue, to the green, to the yellow, all six days until Shabbat, which is brown, follows the colors of the spectrum. I don't believe this was a coincidence. We don't have the notes, but I believe when Bereshit was being given over, that the spectrum followed, the, the colors of creation followed the spectrum. It's certainly <clears throat> possible that it's embedded into the Yod Vafe. It's certainly what, uh, what we didn't do today, nor do I want to get into this, is the directions. There's so much more to this, you know, that we, that we couldn't do today. But this was the chart, which is the directions, the front and the back and the past and the future coming out. Certainly what's practical is the 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 the, uh, the, the, the talit that Reb Zalman created, 
you know, which follows the spectrum from chesed mm. all the way down to malchut. So when you're wearing the coat of many colors or zalman's talit, you know, you're wearing, it's a full spectrum experience, right? And that's right. what happens. That's what happens in the creation too. As are the connections with the uh, astrological. Well, that's what I was asking Lorelai. Right. I, I want to learn. Yeah, Lorelai's Lo Laura Laura into that. But I want to sneak in here that what you said about the Shema is consistent with the hypothesis that the Shema is actually an encoded meditation instruction directing our attention to Shin, Mem, and Aleph. Beautiful. Neshama is, is yeah. soul, spirit, is breath. Hashamayim, all the sounds. Uh, heaven and earth, fire and water. Nice. And Anochi. Beautiful. Well, that's how I was asking Lorelai about the colors of the, uh, you know, the various signs, astrological signs. And she said there certainly is an alignment to the colors in the spectrum. So I want to learn about that. There's, there's so much to learn, right? But we just got to keep it simple so we do it, right? And uh, if you do some of these meditations, if you do one meditation, Dayenu. If you do two, Dayenu, right? Whatever you do is going gonna, is gonna to be sufficient. You know, more and more is good. And once it's in you, it's in you. It'll, it'll grow. Yeah. 